Welcome back to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko. In the past three episodes, we took a deep dive on who Zandile Kumalo, the farmer, is, and we got to learn a little bit more around the markets that she serves and her hydroponic system in which she's farming her beautiful crops. Today, we get to discuss the general side around farming and agriculture and hear what advice Zandile has for us for those of us who are wanting to pursue a career in farming and agriculture. Stay tuned. Zandile, what are some of the infrastructural costs required to build a rooftop farm? To build a rooftop farm, basically, you need a tunnel. So the costing that is needed to become a hydroponic farmer, basically, you can start from 350000 and it can go up to one5 So it all depends on how you design your farm, how you want your farm model to be, um, basically, how would you want to your ventilations to be. So you can be able to add in your wet walls, which then increases your costings. Um, the systems that you use, if you go A-frames, then it increases your costing that's vertical farming or horizontal then it reduces a little bit of your costing whether you add in your fans or whether you go straight automation with LED lighting so all that it makes the cost make up the cost of your farm model or your farm design of how it's supposed to look like so yeah basically that's how it is. Sandile, having completed your studies in analytical chemistry and now being a full-time entrepreneur what are, the, some of, what are some of the lessons that you've learned around business? Around business, I've learned that you need to always keep on investing in yourself. Because I don't come from, from a family of farmers, so I've been learning first, first time hand experiences for myself. And mistakes have been made, and I've learned from my mistakes. So in business, I've learned that partnership is important. The type of network you keep yourself around is important. Mentorship is important because the mentors are the people that will always uplift you, whether in business, whether in farming techniques, whether in technology, you need to always keep on learning, learning, learning. So when you keep on doing that, at this current moment, I'm learning finances in my business. I'm like, I need to take care of my finances. I need to make sure that my schedules are right. I need to make sure that the business is running right, your marketing and sales is running right that those type of skills you need them as you go along and you keep on learning from all the mentors that you get the little bit of information that they give you it gives you much much knowledge and you become the a great business person within the business sector itself yeah would you say it's easy starting a business with partners or would you advise for people to start a business alone learn the tricks and trades around farming and business and then bring on partners for me, it's been always partners. Yeah. Um, it always worked for me. It wouldn't work for, it doesn't, it's not like a one formula for all type of businesses. So it depends on what type of a business person do you want to be. So for me, partnerships have always worked because we do not own land as youngsters. We mm. can't afford land because of we do not have security. So you have to go out there and partner with people with land. Mm. I went out there, partnered with property owners because they've got the space that I need. I've went out and partnered with universities because they've got the space that I need and therefore I bring in my technicality skills. So depends on what you need. As a business person you can't have everything or as a farmer you can't have everything. So for me I partner with property owners. Yeah. What do you think makes a successful partnership in business? Uh, sharing the same goal. <laughs> sharing the same goal. Yes, you need to share the same goal because with understanding within that goal you get to see the end goal together. Conflicts become lesser, um, knowledge sharing become lesser. So in all my business partners, we share the same goal of wanting to feed the nation. Uh, Flanagan and Jared, we share the same goal of bringing food closer and making the conquered jungle green. So it all surrounds food and I get to meet my goal. You know, there's so many people out there who want to become farmers, who want to become entrepreneurs and start their own business. Do you think it's easy to enter into the agriculture sector and also to start your own business? To enter the agricultural sector doesn't need for you to do agriculture because 
We come with a background of knowing how to plant. As Africans, we know how to put a seed onto the ground and able to grow. Now, as a farmer, when you're now in business, it's now getting those little techniques and skills for you to be able to become a better business person, a better farmer, understanding it that it's not from hand to mouth, but it's hand, profit, then feeding the people. Yeah. So those little skills that you gain for yourself, it helps you to grow, to become a better person tomorrow. Yeah, with your hydroponic systems that you're using in your farm, you know, you mentioned how quick the crops grow. So do you think that it's easy Easy to make money in hydroponic farming as opposed to conventional farming. Yo, but you know it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy to make money in hydroponic. Yeah. You have to put in the work. If you want different results, you have to put in the work. So with even whether it's conventional or hydro, you put in your hard work for you to be able to see the results of what you're doing. I work seven days a week. So that hard work, it needs to be put in there so that I can put my footprint in the business so that I can see the results of the output of my business. If you do not work or work towards your end goal, nothing would happen. But you need to be able to put in those skills, motivation of people, making sure your staff understands, getting those coordinates right, then the business runs. Then you start understanding now how the world affects it. Then the business rights. Then, yeah, it's basically that. Also, when we were talking offline, you mentioned that you know you lie with a lot of investors, right? Um, do they ask you if your business is insured? And would you advise for farmers to insure their crops to mitigate against the risks that we experience in agriculture? Yes, um, I would advise on that, Mbali, because there's a lot of risk when farming. You know. Anything can happen. We can't predict weather, we can't predict any disaster that may come through. Imagine when you have a hole wiped out and you put in your money. Sure. That insurance, it helps you to be able to kick back and become, to start farming again. So it will be able to assist, to help you whenever you are able to insure your farm. Insure your tunnels too, because then if a wind comes, a strong wind comes, tears your greenhouse tunnel, then you won't have the money tomorrow to patch it. But when you've insured it, that return of money, when you've reported it, you can be able to patch it up and start again farming production again. Oh wow. And how do you think from your perspective, we could get more young people into farming? Exposure expose them to as much of technology it is. I go to schools, I go to youngsters, I go talk and motivate people, show them how farming is moving and make, show them how, how, how nice farming it is. Cause you know, a lot of youngsters say farming is unfashionable, but we need youngsters in farming. So the exposure that we give, the knowledge that we keep on sharing, it does bring in the youth, it does bring in them in numbers, and we are able to see the difference, and now we know that our generation is secured. Yeah, earlier on we spoke about where do you see you growing um, your, your business, and now from a production perspective, and, and now I just want to know, just as Zandile, the business person, the agripreneur, yeah. Where do you see yourself growing in the line of business? I see myself owning the concrete jungle, making sure that as much as seeing hydroponics popping up here and there, being able to see roofs being green, being able to see a lot of uh, people being fed through these fresh vegetables, that's where I see myself being involved with these young farmers, being able to give them advice to become better farmers tomorrow and let's continue feeding the world. Wow, Zandile, it's been an absolute pleasure and an honor getting to know you as a person, your business, and thank you so much for opening up your farm and your business to us right here on Private Property. Thank you very much, Mbai. It's a pleasure. Whilst there you have it, the A to Z of hydroponic rooftop farming with neighbor roots. The farmer, Zandile Kumalo, please remember her name and support her should you be in this area. If you have a farm or an agribusiness that you want us to profile right here on the Farming Podcast, please reach out to us on all our platforms. We'd be happy to explore conversations around farming and agriculture to inspire as many people as possible. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to The Farming Podcast by privateproperty.co.za. My name is Mbali Nwoko, your host, and look out for many more episodes to come. Happy harvesting. <laughs>